Hello everyone, my name is Oriol Colomés and today I'll be talking about solving transient PDs with GridApp.jl. GridApp is a pure Julia package uh, to solve uh, partial differential equations using the finite element method. Uh, with that we can solve simple problems like the linear elasticity problem but we can also solve more complex problems uh, given by nonlinear problems or uh, flow using the Darcy equations or the incompressible navier stokes equations or damage models. We have also the, the option to solve um, uh, problems like the electromagnetic scattering which involve complex PDs. On top of that, GridApps comes with a nice ecosystem uh, with additional packages that introduce new features like the GridApp Gmesh package that allows to use uh, meshes generated from Gmesh, GridApp uh, Embedded that helps uh, uh, when we have complex geometries. So with this package we can uh, solve uh, problem in where you have complex geometries embedded in background grids or the grid app distributed package that uh, allows us to solve problems in distributed computers. A few months ago, we also had the grid app, uh, grid app ODS package with all the machinery to solve transient PDs uh, incorporated in that. But uh, since a few months ago, this has been uh, fully incorporated into the source code of grid app. And this is precisely what I'm going to talk about today. So what uh, type of problems are we interested in? Uh, we, are, we want to solve transient PDEs. That means that we have um, the appearance of the time derivative uh, of the unknown uh, into the equation and we have uh, problems that evolve in time. Okay, this is the case, for instance, of the shallow water equations in the, in the sphere. We have also problems such as waves interacting with flexible structures or uh, tsunami type waves uh, interacting with fixed structures. Uh, how uh, do we do that in GridApp? We want to maintain the GridApp standards. Uh, one of the key points in GridApp is the simplicity, uh, where we are able to reproduce um, in a very simple way the weak form of the problem. So this is how you would write the, weak, the residual of the weak form of the problem in the steady case. Uh, and as you can see, it's very similar to what you would write in the paper. Okay, And we want to keep that for the transient problem, so uh, we can do that through the use of this um, partial t operator that uh, represents the time derivative of the unknown u uh, in that case. Okay, so I, I, and you see that we keep this uh, simplicity of writing weak forms into the scripts. Another uh, nice feature of GridApp is the ability to compute Jacobians using automatic differentiation. So when we want to solve a nonlinear problem uh, using the Newton method, for instance, we end up with a problem where we have the Jacobian. We need the Jacobian. And with GridApp, you can define this uh, Jacobian through automatic differentiation of the residual. Okay, and, and we don't need to uh, define explicitly the Jacobian when defining the finite element operator. In the transient case, uh, we want to preserve this feature. Uh, and what we do is we account for the extra Jacobian that comes from the fact that we have the time derivative of the unknown. So we end up with two Jacobians now that we can uh, compute uh, using automatic differentiation. One is the, the derivative of the residual with respect to the unknown and that and the other one comes from the derivative of the residual with respect to the time derivative of the unknown. And again, we can uh, define a transient finite element operator only by sending the residual without having an explicit definition of these uh, two Jacobians. Uh, another uh, important feature of uh, GridApp is generality. Um, that means that if we have the heat equation that is given uh, in that case as the first order ODE, uh, and as you see here, we have the partial T operator that uh, represents the first order derivative. When we have a second order operator, we want to keep the same approach. Okay, uh, and in that case, we use the partial TT as the second derivative with respect to time of the unknown. And about extendability, now if a user wants to define a new ODE solver, uh, we want it to make it simple for, for him or her. Uh, so a new ODE solver is nothing else than, than a map uh, from a given time and given uh, state on the unknowns to the new state at given uh, time t and plus one. Okay, And to define this map, we just need uh, a few things. One is uh, we need to be able to compute the, the residual. And this boils down to uh, be able to have an expression of a certain 
time derivative at a given uh, time in, in, in the interval. And we need an explicit expression of this time derivative to uh, be able to evaluate the residual. And for the Jacobian, we also need, apart from this explicit expression of the time derivative, we need to know uh, how the time derivative relates to the unknown itself. And usually this is uh, just a scaling factor times the time step size. So these are the two things that uh, the user will have to implement uh, just to define a new ODE result. Now, what are the key aspects uh, in the implementation wise um, of the transient uh, part in grid apps? One is the transient self-fill uh, concept. So a transient self-fill is a struct that has a single self-fill and uh, derivatives uh, as a tuple. So when we want to evaluate this transient self-fill at a given time, we just evaluate uh, the inner self-field. But when we want to take derivatives, we just uh, return another transient self-field that has as, self, as a self-field the first derivative and as derivatives, the consecutive um, time derivatives um, for higher order. So that allows us to have some kind of uh, recursivity. So now when we want to have the second order derivative with respect to time, that's the same as the first order derivative of the first derivative with respect to time. And this will return another cell field, transient cell field with um, the composition of uh, the cell field associated to the second order derivative and a tuple with higher order derivatives inside. Another key aspect of the implementation of the transient pattern in grid is that the, the solution to an ODE system is, uh, is not computed uh, when we solve. So when we call the solve function, it will return a struct that, it, that is kind of an iterator. So we, when we want to ac access these, um, the values of the solution, we need to iterate through them. And when, when we iterate, uh, the solution will be computed. Okay. So now if we want to operate with the solution, we will have to do it inside a loop. And just to wrap up, here you have a, an example of uh, how a, a numerical simulation of a simple heat equation will look like. So we are able to define the residual of our equation in a, in a simple way, as you would write it in, in, in paper. We can define the Jacobians, but we can also use automatic differentiation to compute these Jacobians. And now we can define a uh, given ODE solver like the theta method, a certain initial conditions. And we can use the solve function to get the solution as an iterator that later, as you can see below, we iterate over the solution and store the solution in a Paraview uh, uh, file. So that's it. If you want more details, you can uh, take a look at the tutorials. And if you want to get involved into the development, there are many things to do. So you can get in touch in the, in the Gitter site or through the GitHub page of GridUp. Thank you very much.